Hello everyone, how you going? And welcome back to Black Magic Craziness. You know what it really is, but it is the place as it says that anything that is Clusy has no other explanation than just good old fashioned voodoo black magic. Now, you know, you might experience some of these things in your day-to-day -day life and you just go, how is that even possible? And you think it's a ghost or you kind of blame it on something else. But no, don't worry, you're not going crazy. Just some people are just true magicians, but let's jump straight into it. Fruit with a particular wax when placed in water. Surely this can't be anything else besides nature's super hydrophobic kind of design. You know, that gets all the little hairs like on a lily. Any of those kind of things that have the super fine hair and they just trap a little air bubble. But let's have a look. I wonder what that is. Whoa, look at the water tension. I did not expect it to be to that extent. That is ridiculous. The fact that it can just create an entire bubble around itself. My goodness. I wonder if the hairs extend that long or if it's just the level of water tension and air pocket that it can trap. But wow, it didn't even say what it was. It just says fruit, which is a shame because, man, you just have everyone and their dog trying to try this if they knew what it was. And at first, I wasn't sure if it was going to change color or not, but that is just so much cooler than color changing. You just see the size of that air pocket there. And I think the other crazy thing is that that looks like it's a plate, like it's flat and then suddenly you're just able to submerge the grape in it, you know? Obviously it's a bowl, but it looks as though it's a flat water. There's just so many layers of black magic craziness going on here. But man, isn't nature just incredible? Just the fact that there is so many simple things that are better than any design we've ever been able to make, you know? Whether it be from solar panels and photosynthesis or, you know, hydrophobic coatings and hairs, all of this kind of stuff is just unrivaled in nature. Well done, nature. You're talented. Copper ball gets smaller in size when cooled. Well, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so we're going to see the exact extent that heating and cooling a copper bore. That is crazy. That looks as though it's boiling water or something, or maybe it was hot. No, okay, so it was really hot, and then they cooled it down. Look at physics go, you know? Just as things get more dense as they cool down, it's just a perfect demonstration of that. I think it's the most crazy, because that beaker looks as though it's full of hot water, you know? It kind of looks as though it's steamy, but it just must have heated up the ball enough that the steam comes off it. But still, this is a really cool experiment. I guess it makes sense to use copper, because it has a really high thermal conductivity, so you don't have to wait around for an hour for the steel to heat up and cool down. You know, you just plonk it in and five seconds later, it's cold enough and it pops straight out. But wow, the fact that you're even able to just kind of see the amount that it's expanding by and contracting by just from this, you know, it's so quick and so easy. That's incredible. You know, I knew that it expands and contracts, but I never would have thought it was to that degree. That is crazy. See, there's just so many cool little experiments like this that are just so good and so simple, but they just work so well. And so, hey, I guess the next step up from this is to go from liquid helium and try and really contract it down and then try and make it molten and just see the kind of size disparity there. I'm sure we're forgetting that much of a disparity with just a beaker of water, but then we'd get a serious amount with that. Wow, nice trick. Oh, this has to be something to do with Halloween, you know. It was only not, it was not that long ago. Oh, but yep, there we go. There it is. He blew out the face. Obviously, that's pre-chopped. There's no way you could do it elsewhere. Unless you had some kind of micro debt cord or something, there is no way you'd be able to do that without pre-doing it. It's well done, though. I don't know how he's got the holes so well. But wouldn't it just be the best to have a teacher like this? You know, they're completely getting into the spirit. I can only imagine that it's in America, and so Halloween's such a massive event. And then they use that to teach you about chemistry and all the other kind of things. That'd be so cool. And I hope this teacher went home and put that pumpkin on his front yard because there's no point wasting that guy. Look at how good he is. I mean, obviously the students knew what was going on here. There's no way you wouldn't have been able to explain it to them within the fact they were filming as well. But still, come on. Like I said, that's just a great teacher to have. And that's not super easy or quick to do. So, you know, he must love his class. The world certainly needs some more teachers like this. Being hypnotized was never this easy. Oh my goodness. What am I witnessing here? Is that paper? Surely there's no way way that that's paper. I want to see that from the back. Wow, don't tell me it's a perfect loop as well. That is incredible. How is that? What if it's like a crazy contraption? That is not real. There is no way that that can be real. Surely that's a render or something. That would have taken so long to do as well. And how you even go about doing it, I have no idea. I wonder if you could even look this up if you tried. I wonder if it's actually kind of expanding and contracting how it looks as though, or maybe it's just an obstacle illusion or something. Who knows? Well, I guess she does, but man, either way, that is just crazy to look at. The fact that that is a real obstacle object and not some render it's just ridiculous to me how people go out designing these things is well above me and it's just so good at this perfect loop you know the unsatisfaction of this not being a perfect loop would have just ruined the whole thing so man i wish i could make something like that but it just looks like it takes so much time and energy and kind of skill too you know you got to get all the cuts right or something unless it's all prefab who knows either way it's impressive someone to explain this i've watched it a few times and still don't get it don't tell me this is going to be the same as the other guy that we had last time on here but oh my goodness these ropes that are untieable but then tieable and just breakable. What is going on here? What is going on here? How do they do this? We had the same thing last time. Look, you tie them together and then he gets all the same. It just must be magnets and a noodle. I just have no idea how they make it so perfect. And you know, and he started with two ends and now he has four ends and now we have eight ends or something. I just said, oh my goodness, it is just ridiculous. What is going on here? And what is it for the fedora? I swear the last guy was wearing a fedora as well. Look, it's just like the magician 
Christian's hut. Maybe that's what we're all missing. Maybe if we put a fedora on, suddenly we'll just be enlightened. We'll understand what's going on here. But yeah, I think the last guy's was almost more impressive. You know, he had a hoop. He split it open. He twirled it around. He stuck it in his pocket. He did all this crazy stuff. This guy just kind of did the same thing again. So it's not as impressive when you see it for a second time. Doesn't mean it's any less mind bending because it just doesn't make any sense. I don't get how you do it. It must be a special rope. But oh my goodness, magicians are just ridiculous. I guess it's all the secrets of the trade. But man, they just keep doing us dirty. They're just keeping all the secrets to themselves. Leaving us all in headaches and just wondering for days after how, how, how do you do this? And suddenly I have no answers for it. I do not get it. I don't understand how they do it. So really that's, yeah, there you go. That's learnt. If you want to learn, go before it and maybe you can tell the rest of us. It's all about perspective. Oh no, I should have guessed that with the word perspective in the title there's going to be some kind of optical illusion. Oh my goodness, how is it floating there as well? Okay, no, actually I did see the wires very quickly. Oh my goodness, and then it turns to a circle. That's really cool. I do understand how perspective can be so influential in how you see things, but still it is incredible. You just go, no, that's a square on one side and a circle on the other. You know, realistically at this point it's just a four dimensional object. It cannot exist, but yet it does. I also always love when people make a number and then you turn it 90 degrees and it's another number and then you turn 90 degrees and it's another number like you just have all the different faces being different numbers just because of this perspective and how the kind of shapes have been cut out positioned and whatnot that's always really cool too any artwork like that as well it's always cool well I guess that's exactly what this is isn't it it looks like it's in an art gallery or whatnot but yeah I wonder how much trial and error went into making the perfect shape or if you just kind of was able to do it with a 3d model and envision it and then just made it really easily because the actual piece of metal would be really easy to make you know you just have to make three hoops and weld them together or whatnot but you know actually constructing the idea about how to go about it, that I feel could have taken quite a while. Let alone all the trial pieces and whatnot, and you just go, it just doesn't quite line up yet. So yeah, like I said, I just love these kind of artworks and kind of sculptures and whatnot. They're so cool. I'd have them in my house any day if I could. I think I've had too much wine. What am I watching right now? What? What is that? How is it wobbling? No, there's no way. I don't accept this. This is ridiculous. Are they going to zoom back out and show what's going on here, or are they just going to leave it and be weird? Surely this isn't real. Surely that this has to be a computer render or something. There's no way that that thing, and as his perspex or something can just continually just bend and it'll be fine. And you can actually see it is kind of moving because the wine in the top of the glass is moving, you know. If it was just kind of a stationary and you didn't see it rocking back and forward, you could kind of tell that the glass would be moving instead of the wine. But in this case, what is going on here? I do not understand. How is this happening? Surely it's a matter of perspective again, you know. Like, look, I guess you, you can see in the reflection that it is in front of the bottle, not next to it. But I guess you kind of can see that already. But I don't know, maybe the top of the glass is hanging and the base isn't actually connected or something. I just don't understand. Actually, it kind of looks as though there's a bit of a disconnect in here, so maybe that's where it's happening, but I have no idea how you go even about doing this. It's a great title though, really, you know, like, whoa, what is going on here? How many bottles have I had and my entire wine glass is just swaying back and forward? And to that I'd say, unless you're this guy and you can actually make a wine glass kind of wobble back and forward, you would probably have way too much, because there is no way that the wine glass is really doing what we think it's doing here. It is more so that you're rocking back and forward. So yeah, really, I just have no idea about this one. I guess it's kind of as explainable as the rope fedora guys. A rollerblade wizard. God, rollerblading. Oh my goodness. I was about to say rollerblading is so impressive, but that is just absurd. I guess this is kind of the same as when guys will be a Mexican, you know, remove their front wheel and continue riding along and then catch it again. But just the fact that he maneuvered it around these unsuspecting people and then caught it back with a cross leg maneuver into the spin. It's like the complete show off maneuver all in one. You know, you really know you're a pro when you don't even need two roller skates anymore. You just go, no, I'll be right. I'll just send that one over there and I'll just keep the one and we'll just continue mounting along. But that is just so impressive. I wonder how many attempts it took and how many years they've been practicing that because that is ridiculous. The fact that it curved back to them. Oh my goodness. Really, there is no other title besides a rollerblade wizard, is there? I feel as though if I trained for the rest of my life with roller skates, I could not pull that stunt off. It just seems as though you just have to have the knack to be able to do something like that. Or maybe you're just extremely lucky and everything went your way. You know, someone could have kicked it over. But either way, whatever it may be, this person was able to pull it off and I just feel as though I'd never be able to do such a thing in a million years. And then really, like I said, just the spin to win at the end is just absurd that they've come out of that straight into a spin. So really, this person's just lucky that they live in modern times. You know, a few hundred years ago, they would have been burnt to the stake for doing such witchcraft. If this isn't trippy, I don't know what is. How do these connect? Oh no, another perspective with shapes. Oh no, wait, what is going on here? Okay, so you open it up. Oh wow, that is so, wait, what, what, wait, 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 hang on, hang on, going back, what just happened there? I thought the magic trick was just gonna be the fact that that red cube is able to fit into the dodecahedron or whatever it 
abilities. Not that it was going to complete them back in an entirely new shape. Once again, I can only assume that it's magnets. You know, something in there is locking in. You can kind of see at the start, they pull it apart, but it doesn't fully come in. Then they pull it apart again, and then it locks in, and, and then everything opens up. But man, that is so cool. I feel as I could play with that for hours. And then just the way it manipulates, it has to be magnetized. That's the only way, but it's so cool that he's able to fit those two shapes into kind of one and meld them together so easily. And I wonder if it's kind of a set combination, or maybe you can just play with it and make any kind of combinations you can come up with. I can only imagine it is quite expensive, but still, that is just so cool. Look at that. Just the fact that it just opens up like it's nothing, and then you just spin it around, and it's all stays together. See, even though we see so many people on all these subs that would struggle to breathe if you didn't remind them, this sub's great, because you actually get reminded that there is some seriously smart people out there designing some seriously cool stuff. Black and blue, yellow and white dress illusion. Come on now, surely not. Come on now, this is old news. It's all to do with the background, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is drawn, so there's no way to know, but the original gold and white and blue and black dress was the pinnacle of this kind of stuff. I think later on there was actually some shoes or there was something else. It didn't get the same kind of traction in blowing people's minds as the dress did, but I'm fairly sure there was something else afterwards. But yeah, it really just depends on what the background colors are and the surrounding colors. You know, if with the white being there, it makes the yellow look really yellow, but the black and the blue and all that kind of stuff. But really, you know, when you put it against this yellow black around here and then this blue and black around over here, then that's when you really get the stark comparison. I remember the first one I saw was kind of this cube and it's the same color. You can take it in Photoshop and everything. It's the same color, but your mind just deceives you because of the background color. I'll put up an image and I'm sure you've seen it, but it's the exact same principle as this. I just can't believe that this has made a comeback, you know? Surely everyone knows what is going on by now. But maybe we're in a whole new generation of people's minds being blown. Who knows? Either way, yes, it is cool, but at least this one's semi-explainable compared to some of the others. Come on. Matsuyama's Paradox. Oh, is this going to be a puzzle or what is that? Is that a book? Oh, oh, I see. Wait, so they're not perfectly cut, but I imagine like the chocolate bar, you can make an entire new piece. Let's see. So you put that one, flip it around and then you put it there and then you put it. Oh, wait, hang on. Whoa, you're true. Oh my goodness. That is crazy. Where does the space go? Like I said, it's exactly the same as the chocolate bar that was going around a few years ago where people were saying, oh, look, you can make more chocolate for nothing. But this is just the reverse of that. You know, these pieces are actually taking up less space. I'm sure if you actually looked at it, it would make sense, but it's a little bit bit too tricky to kind of analyze here and now. Once again though, how people figure this kind of stuff out is just beyond me. How do you design something in the first place that is meant to be a puzzle and hard or an illusion or whatever it may be? I just don't understand where you even start from. So yeah, obviously that was the name of the paradox. I don't know if there's a name for the solution, but maybe one of you guys knows a bit more about what's going on here. This spray on ice crystal window frost. Is this going to be some kind of movie prop glue or something? What is going on? Oh wow, that is really impressive actually. Oh wow, wait, it's actually growing as it goes. Oh my goodness, how is that working? Go look at that. That's actually crazy. Look at the effect it gives. I mean, I do feel as though it is a bit fakey until you make it, but still, that is a really cool product. It's kind of like ice magic. I don't know if other countries have ice magic, but that was always the bomb growing up. It's a liquid chocolate sauce that when you pour it over ice cream, it freezes and hardens, and then you just have this hard chocolate on top of your ice cream, but it was a liquid before. It's, it's, it's ice magic. It's a cool kind of party trick. And I don't know why, but this reminds me of that. Surely this is some kind of movie prop thing, or I don't know how it works, but it's really cool. I really didn't expect it to kind of grow like it does. I thought it was just kind of be a spray on and then it kind of hardens or whatnot and then that's what it is, but it looks as though it develops. But yeah, I feel as though, like I was saying, if you're in a country that needs this for Christmas and if you're not in a cold enough environment for this to just have it on its own, isn't this just going to be a little bit weird for you in one window to have frosting and nothing else? I don't know, it's a cool product, but still, it's a bit strange, really. I mean, there's probably some chemical collects in it, so it really wouldn't be designed for human skin, but I wonder what would happen if you did spray it on yourself. I wonder if it would kind of be this crusty thing or if it would be flexible or what it would feel like on your skin, because I imagine it would be a really weird sensation. So yeah, I can't say I've ever seen such a thing, but really, it's a pretty cool product for what it can do. How do you like your walls? Hang on, is this some funky tent or something? What is going on here? Are they walls that are compressed out like a tent roof? That is really cool, and it makes sense. I guess if you can get that sturdy structure, it makes total sense. But what does it look like on the inside, though? Is it just full of poles or something? Oh my goodness, no way is that see-through. That is crazy. Wow. I want one. I actually do. This is so cool. I can only imagine it's a hunting product, considering it's complete camo, and then you can see out of it, but man, is that incredible engineering. I'm just looking through it, but I can only imagine it's completely waterproof, and the poles look because they're tiny, you know? Well, it looks incredibly sturdy for just having these little kind of flimsy looking poles. But I guess when you make an entire box like this, it would be, you know? You've got four walls and a roof to support it instead of just a roof like a normal tent. But just look at it from the outside, you would never expect that you'd be able to see through that like one-way glass. That is just ridiculous. That is so opaque from the outside, and then you go inside and it's completely transparent almost. I can only imagine that this tent costs the earth, but man, is it cool. Or maybe you can't even buy it. Maybe it's some like fancy military tech or something, but either way, I'm glad that we have to be 
brought such incredible technology. Just imagine sleeping in it, you know, it'd be this weird mental trip because you can see everything but no one can see you, you'd kind of feel exposed but then not, you'd just be constantly overthinking it, go, do, are they looking at me, are they doing this, but no, they're just looking at the cool tent that you've got. So like I said, I'm sure it is super expensive and I don't know how well it's going to pack down and how well it's going to be for hiking, but man is it cool. Like I said, I'll take one in a heartbeat if someone's offering them. Bubbles, smoke and fire, yeah? Oh, I can only imagine this is going to be some special mixer and he can light it up or maybe he can put a flame in the bubble. That's a big bubble, my man. Well done. Wait. Oh, wow. He's putting butane in a separate bubble. I guess considering he blew into the first one, the first one was oxygen. What did he just put in that? What is that gas? Why did it go cloudy when he put oxygen in the butane one? What is going on here? This is just some crazy collaboration of tricks. Oh my goodness. And then he was able to light it as a fire tornado. What is going on? Wow, look at the size of that flame. Just the fact that it's a burning butane and oxygen mixture and that's it, but you get such a perfect burning bubble. I really want to know what this kind of contraption is because it looks as though he adds something to it, but it looks also as though he just breathes into it. But yeah, then he takes that and puts it in there and then he just joins it like it's nothing. You can really just see where this is black magic creation is because who lights a bubble on fire with butane and then has it just spurting out the top? How's it not just racing back inside and completely popping? It just doesn't make sense. Like like I said with some of the other posts, how many years and how many times have they practiced this just to get it perfectly right, you know? It seemed as though you could just do it on a whim, no questions asked. Like the roller skating guy, how many times do you stuff it up before you know and nail it down pat? I think the thing that takes you back the most is just that it's a bubble, you know? Something so fragile just has a flame coming out of it. Along with everything else, you know, like he joined it and he frosted it and all that kind of stuff and he put butane in it, but still, just the fact that it's a bubble that is on fire and it isn't bursting is just ridiculous. So yeah, I don't know what's going to beat this post, but I can certainly see why it's second on the black magic craziness and speaking of the top the top of black magic craziness for the month is now you see now you don't see oh not more magic oh my goodness where is he getting all the tomatoes from i can only imagine the tomato wait hang on was that just an edit cut or did he just kind of slide the hand out of the hell out of it okay so one two three one just he put one behind his hand and then he just wait i didn't see it's so fast why is it so quick didn't he just have three and then it went to two and then it went to one and then it's there mustn't be real tomatoes it must be foam balls or something oh wait did he just transfer did he just do some transfiguration and just transfer the mug. Yes, he did. And then he did it back. What the hell's going on? He transferred the mug into a tomato and then back into a mug. Now you see, now you don't see. More like now you're confused and now you're extra confused. This just hurts your brain to watch. Where does he get them all from? Ups and daisies, out of the hat, and then there's suddenly water in it. Of course, there's suddenly water in it. What is going on, my man? How do you do this? I honestly didn't even notice that it had looped around at first. I got like 10 seconds in, and because it was just so fast and he was just doing so many different things, I didn't even see that it had restarted the video. How does one achieve? such sleight of hand to do it at this speed where look out of thin air he just grabs nothing and then it's there and then it's not and then it's there and then it's not and then it's like he's just able to create things from thin air i can only imagine looking at that background that it's some tv show you know like x factor or x country's got talent or whatever it may be but still Still, how is this person that good at sleight of hand? It does not make sense. But really, sleight of hand is just so impressive. This guy's just taking it to a whole nother level. This is the speed at which he's done it at. And then the fact that he just incorporates water and then he's just spitting them out. I just don't understand where they all come from and go to. So yeah, like I said, I wasn't sure what was going to beat number two, but I can really see why this one is beating number two. It is just so impressive and crazy and the epitome of this sub, isn't it? Really what it comes down to is just unexplainable to the nth degree. And this guy is nailed it with that. But anyway, that's going to do it for Black Magic Craziness. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please do the YouTube analytical things down below. Other than that, I've been posting a lot of these videos and maybe want to check out the last one. You know, you maybe want to see the Fedora guy that we saw last time. I reckon he was super good. I don't know if we've seen anything that tops some of the ones on this one. So maybe tell me which one was your favorite. And then maybe you want to head out and check some of the other videos we've been posting out because I have been posting a lot of these at the moment. Or maybe you just want to consider subscribing so you don't miss another one in the future. But all in all, have a good one and see ya.